first question that came in, there was a question about what do you mean uh, by workplace? Thanks for that question. That's a, that's a great question. When we talk about indoor air quality, our, uh, a gauge that we can look to is, is workplace, or uh, I think the definition of workplace is more than eight to ten employees. I think it's ten employees that aren't related. So it's a, it's a regulated type of, of condition. Um, in many situations, farms do not fall under those type of regulations, but it does provide us a, a guide for indoor air quality levels. Hey, Aaron. Another question came in. Uh, wouldn't the other explanation for south and north not matching simply be that the sensor was not measuring the actual mean airspeed through that large opening? Yes, that, that is a uh, somewhat of an explanation for, for them not matching directly. We have done some measurements to gauge the, where we measured in relation to the average air speed through that opening, doing some profile measurements. And that is part of the explanation, but we know that that happens then at both openings. So um, we think that's part of the, part of the issue um, with them not agreeing um, in addition to um, some of that backdrafting and recirculation impacts, in, especially at that south end. Uh, another question kind of along that line was, how many more emission data points would you have if you assumed that the north airflow numbers were more reliable and just used north airflow in all cases? Um, from the, I don't have the numbers right in front of me, but for open curtain conditions, which was our other limiting factor, that those measurements were concentrated during the warmer conditions or the summer conditions. And for our region in South Dakota and Iowa, during those, con during those summer months, spring, summer, fall months, our typical wind direction is from the south to the north. So if we only consider conditions with open curtain, adding, um, adding in emission data when the wind was from the north to the south actually doesn't add in too many more points, um, maybe 25% more data points. Um, there are some other ways, though, to, to try and, and augment this emission data, provide a bit more of a uh, holistic view over, over the temperature ranges and variable airspeed conditions that we monitored. So we please stay tuned for some more analyses to that regard. OK, I would encourage our audience, if you have questions, to uh, try to chat, type them into the chat pod. Uh, Mindy, I've got a question for you from the standpoint of the particulate matter. Um, the data you showed presented basically was on uh, one barn. Where do you see the data analysis uh, going, or what are your uh, plans and procedures looking forward here in terms of summarizing that data? OK, thanks, Beth. Yeah, um, I, I don't know if I mentioned that when we were presenting or not, but that in-depth study that we did was just on one of our bed pack barns. Um, so, so that data was not on a scrape and haul system. We do have the, the mini bowl data that was collected periodically over the two-year period from the South Dakota site. And so that's being analyzed right now. And um, again, maybe hopefully we'll have some more of that data to present at the B facilities conference in November. Would a north-south barn data be much different if it was oriented north to south instead of east to west? That's a, that's a good question. And that's a hard one to answer. <laughs> my, my feeling on this question is that um, the manure management system is going to influence, um, have a large influence on the concentrations in that barn. The emission then also incorporates the airflow through that barn. Um, east or west winds um, probably are going to occur less often, and so you're not going to have as many maybe higher airflows than to move those gases that are in the barn out of the barn. So if you look at it from that perspective, it's it's possible that they might be slightly different, but I guess. If we think back to just some of the temperature um, and manure management impacts, uh, there is an airflow impact on concentrations as well. I, 
I don't, I can't say for certain, but I, I would expect the air quality at least to be um, somewhat fairly similar in those types of barns. But that's only looking at it from an air quality perspective, a north-south barn versus an east-west oriented barn. Did you see anything so far that you think will impact management advice for producers? And Mindy, I guess we'll start with you. Um, well, I, I think that some of the data that, that Aaron showed demonstrates that we do have some differences between pack systems and scrape systems, um, particularly with the ammonia and the hydrogen sulfide. Um, that being said, and we've, we've talked about this many times before, um, I don't think one system is going to be right for all producers, um, and a good manager can make either system work. So, um, Aaron, do you have something to add to that? I would agree. Again, I think it comes down to looking at what you're, you know, if you're looking at, at a management change um, for an air quality purpose, you have to then prioritize, you know, which gas are you concerned with, because it depends on, on which gas you're trying to control maybe what uh, manure management system would, um, would potentially reduce those concentrations or those, those emissions. So again, we don't have a, a one-size-fits-all solution uh, on, the, on the air quality side, I don't feel, but I think we're in, improving our knowledge about what the conditions are in these barns, um, at least so far with manure management and temperature. And, and over time, hopefully we can also tie in some other factors like the um, and with some other research projects that are going on with the bedding material, perhaps the pack height, and, and other aspects of the um, manure itself. Question for you, what about the winter conditions with dust? Did you have any data on that? Um, we didn't have any winter conditions with this uh, in-depth study that we did. Uh, the winter condition data will be with the mini bowl data that we have collected at the South Dakota barn. Right. We do have some, uh, some dust concentration data collected um, at, our, at our South Dakota sites over, over a variety of temperature conditions. Um, on the emission side, with very little um, airflow through those barns, or reduced airflow, I should say, through those barns during winter conditions, we don't see the emissions of particulate matter being um, particularly high. Concentration data is another question, and fortunately I can't answer it uh, right now off the top of my head. I'll see if I can provide some more guidance for that in our, in our written answers. Were you able to rule out diet differences impacting emissions? Uh, this is Aaron. We are, we do have producer-provided data regarding um, regarding the animal management, but we haven't we haven't looked to that particular question yet. It is an important one. Uh, we recognize so that's a that's a good reminder of something that we need to go back and check. That might be uh, Aaron. Just something that I was thinking about in terms of a lot of our feedlots right now are feeding coal products. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of them tend to be high in sulfur, yep. and they tend to be uh, feeding them basically for energy, which may be overfeeding proteins to some extent, and so that may be impacting some of our data. Mm -hmm. Another question coming was, would you consider your dust and gas emission data to be statist statistically representative? Was stratified sampling given consideration, including airflow measurements? I believe um, those, uh, those methods that you're talking about um, are, are something that we're, we're going to look to when we uh, look back at our, our calculations and how we put this emission data together. What I've presented were just average daily means of our emission data, but um, we have other ways to, to look at this data. Um, I believe using these, some of these methods that you're discussing here um, stratified sampling with airflow, for example, to, to look and see if we can um, provide a, a uh, 
provide a slightly different picture, not different picture, but look at the data in another way to provide maybe a, a different um, overall estimate for, for some of these systems. Were there any concentration data points taken during manure cleaning? There were concentration data points taken during manure cleaning, um, well, particularly in the scrape and haul systems when the manure was scraped out on a weekly basis from these barns, and then also from the um, uh, pack systems, at least the manure removal around the bedded pack. That would have been captured in our concentration data. We would also have variable pack heights um, in the bedded pack barns represented in our concentration data, and we haven't teased out if there are any relationships with concentration and, and, the, re and the related pack height to that data. Erin, well, the question is being typed in. Can you explain to them how many data points were being taken on this uh, particular study? So our, our data spanned about eight months total for each site. Um, and we collected data on a minute-by-minute -minute basis from these sites during each month, minute-by-minute uh, -minute airflow data. With our gas data, we were, our sampling was, was alternating between eight different sampling points around the barn. So at least once every two hours, we have a measurement from the eight different points around the barn that we were measuring. So we have a very large amount of data to um, to go into these calculations for concentration, for airflow, and then for emission. We also have corresponding um, barn conditions um, during these, obviously the temperature, but also air, um, sorry, um, relative humidity. So we have a, a really nice data set that we can further mine to look at uh, not only the air quality in these barns, but also just the general environment in these barns over time, over different seasons. Question came in, did you see significant spikes during cleaning? I, I can't say the um, offhand the, the, the type of jump, but we do see, um, especially with the hydrogen sulfide, some, some blips in the data that we would um, attribute to some cleaning activity. And were there any observations recorded about the condition of the bedding pack? In other words, uh, for instance, wet versus dry. Mindy, the, do you want to answer this question? Um, I, I can. <laughs> so I guess part of it would be, I'm not sure how Sean wants to define wet versus dry. Um, we did have... Um, Site, site recording sheets that, that we made observations on. I mean, if it was a really heavy rain or something, we would know that. But, but as far as, as going in there and taking uh, samples every time we were there and measuring dry matter and something like that, we don't have anything that specific. So general observations, but not specific data, I would say. I will add that um, Mindy, Mindy mentioned one of the previous studies that they have done with the pack barns looking at the fluxes just directly from the surface. Um, she also has some, some ongoing research um, together with, with one of our SCSU students looking at some more of those flux conditions at, on bed pack surface um, in, in a lab scale setting. So we're trying to address some of those more detailed questions about the pack height, at least right now, through some lab scale studies. Is there any... Um the question come was just wondering if there's anything there to advise producers on bedding more often or less often. Mindy, I don't know if you want to comment on what you had seen earlier in some of your research. From the study that we did back in in 2000. Yes. Uh, well. Certainly, air quality is better in the barns when they've been bedded and they're dry. Um, the, the really wet, soupy packs, we had higher concentrations of, of the gases coming off of those. Um, 
So looking at ammonia versus uh, volatile organic compounds, right? Because they were they were highest in the in the transition areas right around the pack, um, and that's where we had our our um, where it was basically the wettest and soupiest because the area around the pack was being scraped all the time, and that was being removed, and the the bedded pack itself was was being rebedded and dried, but that transition area there was where it was kind of continually sloppy and and wet. And that was where we had our highest concentrations of the volatile organic compounds and our highest concentrations of ammonia, too, although ammonia was pretty sporadic. I mean, it, it corresponded more with, with recent urination of the cattle than any particular management in the barn. Okay. 